here with Art Classes for Kids and I'm joined with Lily. And today we're going to do an abstract painting with acrylic paint on canvas. This painting today is inspired by the artist Piet Mondrian. He looks a little bit like this in front of one of his famous paintings. You might know that style of painting that he's most famous for, that we also decorated eggs like last week of this style. But uh, today we're gonna do a little something different of his and it's gonna look a little more like this, but we'll tell you more about that after we tell you about the supplies. So, what are they gonna need today, Lily? Well, what you're gonna need is a water jar and a, oh, and a small skinny paintbrush. Okay. And then you also need some paper towels. Move this out of the way a little. And? And a paper plate for your paint palette, some paints, a pencil, and a ruler. Or if you have one of these, you can use a T-square. It's a specialized ruler. It's just a ruler with something to hook to the top of it. It really helps you make perpendicular lines. Yeah. And last but not least, you're going to need either a canvas like this, which on the back is a wood frame with this fabric stapled around it and it's been primed, means it's been painted with white special sizing paint that tightens up this fabric. You can use this or... Or you can use a canvas panel, which is what this was made on. And it's just a thinner piece of canvas. Yeah, it just doesn't have the wood on it. Yeah. So, uh, and they're a little uh, less expensive, so if you happen to have a canvas panel, use it. If you happen to have a canvas, use that. But if you don't have either, you can paint on watercolor paper or some poster board or cardstock. Yes, and if you're working on a watercolor paper, you can also, you don't have to use acrylic paints. You can also use like a Sharpie and watercolors. Yeah. So, uh, gather up your supplies, and while you're gathering up your supplies, uh, let's tell you a few more things. Well, we, first of all, we want to thank you so much for watching, because I know you guys have been watching for some of you since we started our channel about a year but ago. But, if this is your first time... Yeah, welcome. Yes. And, if it's your first time, each class we make a different project, and we have a lot of videos to choose from. We've made like over 20 videos in the last month, and we have a whole bunch more that we made when we first started our channel. So, you know, any day that we don't have a video uh, online, check out one of our older ones because those are really cool too. Um, if you have been watching and you've been making art and you've been taking pictures of your art and sending it to us, we wanna thank you because we love getting your pictures, we love sending you a quick reply, and if you've never sent us a picture before, you can do it by doing what? By posting your photo on Instagram and tagging it with Art Classes for Kids, or you can email us at Kim and Art Classes for Kids .com. Yes, and uh, also we would love for you to like, subscribe, and, and click the notifications button if so you can see more of our art videos and if you haven't done it already. Yeah, because then you know when we have a new one that comes out and if you want to do something new, you'll know there's something new out. So hopefully by now you've gathered up all your supplies. If you have, what we're going to do is I'm going to tell you a quick bit about this artist. So he's a French artist. He was doing this art a little over 100 years ago and he started by painting woo, these landscapes, which were these trees with tons of branches on them. So this was his earliest works were a little bit like this. Then he took that idea and it turned into this. This idea where they became a little less detailed and more abstract and you notice the trees went from uh, you know having color in the trunk and trees and color in the background. Then they became like this where it became more of a black and white painting and with less detail. Then from there, go ahead and hold that one up Lily. From there he got a little more like this where those branches became more horizontal and vertical and it was more simplified and looks more like geometric shapes. I'm gonna zoom that one into. So there you go, it looks a little more like this. And then came this version, which our painting today is inspired by. 
So this one is very geometric, but it all started with that tree, okay? So we're gonna learn this. Oh my gosh, I'm just like, these things are not wanting to stay. So since they're not wanting to stay so great, I'm gonna actually move them off to the side so we have a little more space to work in. I'm gonna lay that right down here, move our water, and the first thing you're gonna need to do is grab your canvas or your paper, or whatever you decide to use, and your ruler. And you're going to take and you it. can move your other supplies out of the way. Yeah! So grab your canvas, your ruler, and your pencil. And let's get started. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your ruler to the top edge of your painting, and you're just gonna make a horizontal line across. You don't have to go all the way from edge to edge. Just like that. Lily's gonna do hers on the table. And we, I'm gonna do mine here, holding it up. So then you're gonna glide your ruler down a little farther. And with a T-square, the great thing is, is when you glide it, you have this guide with the T to always be perpendicular. Then you just hold your ruler and go across again and move it down a little ways and go across again. Make sure you're always pressing down on the ruler and using and rubbing your pencil on the edge of the line so your pencil doesn't slip underneath the ruler. So you're taking this all the way down and going down a little farther. Yes, and also, like what I just did, you can also make gaps or spaces in your lines too. Yeah, you can do that. I'll do a few of those. So that where you just make two or three dashes to get across. And then I'm gonna do one more right here. Let's see. Like that. So it looks like this. A little like that. And then you're going to add even more lines. So take your ruler or T-square and go in between a few of them and give me a few dashed lines. Kind of looks like little roads. So it's starting to look like this. Okay. So you want to do a few of those down. Now they don't have to be evenly spaced. Because also, it's if, all different. Yes. And also So I if, have some some that are close together like those. Yes, and also if you get um, a diagonal line that you or some kind of line that you accidentally went off of balance with when you were drawing. Yeah, you can just that. Yeah, you can just erase it. And remember, acrylic paint is a lot more opaque than watercolor, so you can usually hide any pencil mistakes. Okay, or any things you want to adjust. Okay, I have one of those diagonal lines that I'm gonna fix. So mine looks like this so far. Mine looks like this. And then I'm gonna rub all my eraser coats off. So mine looks like this. And at the very ends, you can just do a little bit shorter lines. Because in his art, he doesn't have a lot going on in the corners. Most of it's going on in the middle. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn it the other direction. And now we're gonna do more horizontal lines. So, go ahead and you can make these full lines or they could be dashed. Or you could do both. Yep, yeah, or you can do both. So I'm making my way down. I'll go ahead and lay mine on the table. Okay, now I'm looking at it and thinking, hmm, I think I'm going to add a few more lines this direction. I might add a couple lines in between. You don't want to have too many narrow areas because you got to get that paintbrush into a skinny area. Now, once I get it to here, I'm gonna try to close up some of the shapes that aren't closed up. So I look over here and I see that shape's not closed up. I'm gonna go ahead and close that shape up. I'm gonna close this shape up. You can do it with your ruler or you can just do it freehand.
So I'm closing up shapes. So check this out, Lily. See how I'm closing up these mm -hmm. shapes where there's some that are just, the line stops in the middle of a shape? Yep. I'm gonna close those. So see here, most of these shapes are closed up on this side, you see? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm gonna open up. Now, if I have one half, a line halfway through something, I might just open it up right here. I have these two little lines in here. Maybe I'm gonna open that shape up. And right here. So some of them, I'm just gonna erase some lines. Here, I think I need a few more on the ends. So I'm gonna go like from here to here here to here okay so I've added a few more shapes and my mom over here is doing a more uh, detailed look and more complicated look and I'm going for the more simple look of this she's going for bigger shapes so if you are the type of person that likes to take their time, but you don't want to take forever, then do bigger shapes. Or you can take your time and take more time than we even use in this video. And ha and you know, what should they do if we're going a little fast, Lily? Well, you can pause this video at any time if you need to, if, you're, if you think we're going too slow for you or if we're going too fast. Yeah. Okay, so I have mine. Woo, let me add a few more over here. Ooh, I'm trying to shake the table so much. Alrighty, so now I have the shape. I'm erasing a few more of my lines. Alrighty, so here are all my shapes. I have a lot, and I try not to have too many lines in my corners because I'm trying to do a little more of this style right here, where there isn't that much going on in the corners. At least not geometric shapes. So once I get that, and while Lily's finishing that, I'm done with my ruler, I'm done with my pencil, I'm going to grab my little paper palette, and Lily, go ahead and bring yours over and I'll give you paint too. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to give us both some black paint. Now, he always used oh, black- Oh, and white paint too. Yes, he always used black paint for the lines. So we're gonna do all the lines first and then we'll get our colors. And if anybody's doing this with you, and if you're if you finish your black lines before them, you can always think of what colors you want to do for your painting. Yeah, you for can your do scheme. three colors or two colors. So to get started, grab your paintbrush. It might be a little damp, and you know, to get a skinny line, you need to use <laughs> the tip of your hairs of your brush, the tip of the bristles. So I use my arm here. I'm going to start at one side. I'm going to do all the vertical lines till I get to the other side. That way, I'm not rubbing against wet paint. So I'm going to start way over here. And oh, I'm just... and also, um, I totally forgot to tell them. What? If you have long sleeves like me, oh. you want to roll them up because this will stay in your clothes. Yeah, you don't want to reach across your painting and end up having paint all over your sleeve. Yeah, and if you do end up getting some on your clothes, hopefully you have a shirt that you don't mind getting dirty. <laughs> or ruining. <laughs> no. Yeah. So anyway, we're going to make these lines. Now watch my arm. I just lock my hand in place and I just pull my arm down the painting. I know I'm making it look kind of easy. I've had a little practice, but eventually it gets easier the more you do this. So you, I'm doing all my vertical lines first. And then also remember, if you made any gaps, Remember to not um, draw on 
those gaps accidentally. But if you do end up doing it accidentally, that's still fine. It'll be your, you'll be adding your own look to your painting. So try to make the straightest lines you can. Just, you know, just try your best. No matter what happens, it's still gonna look like an awesome painting. And if your lines are a little bit wobbly, if they're consistently wobbly in the whole thing, it's gonna look like, you know, that's the look. So don't worry about it. Just do your best. Okay. You're gonna put your own style on it. Yeah, we're making it our own, but we're using the inspiration of Mondrian. Okay. So he was one of the first painters over 100 years ago to think about minimalizing uh, what the viewer is looking at. Before that, there weren't many uh, painters that were doing that. Now we've seen all kinds of minimalist things. We go to museums and see a canvas that's painted nothing but blue. And wonder, or I'm sure a zillion people say, oh, I could do that. Why is this person in a museum? Well, maybe it was because he was the first guy to do that in color art. So, you know, every artist is different. At the time, this stuff was pretty shockingly different. You know, so now we, we see this kind of stuff all the time. So if you want to get that skinny, uh, you know, point to your paintbrush, make sure that you don't get a big clump of paint at the base of the hairs, right by the middle. So you can always twirl your paintbrush to get it to go back into a point. Hopefully you're using a skinny round brush. And if your paint is kind of goopy, add a touch of water to it so that it, it flows across the canvas easier and smoother. And I think those are all the tips I have for you on paint and skinny line. <laughs> How you doing, Lily? Good. Okay, so just keep going. Oh, I actually did some horizontal lines. I'm just in my own little world. Keep it vertical I for a while. I did some horizontal lines by accident also. At the bottom, well, but I'm not gonna rub over those, so we're safe. Okay. No one's perfect, right? Okay, so we keep making all these vertical lines. And see, these two got so close and there used to be a space between them, but I kind of got them kind of close. But don't worry about that because when you paint with the acrylics and this is dry, a color will just cover the black. Unlike a transparent paint, like a watercolor. This, this acrylic can usually cover up other colors of acrylic. Woo, I'm almost all the way across. Oh, I forgot one of the horizontal yeah, or vertical line on this side. Now, if any of your lines get like little white dots running through them, it's because the paint didn't cover it fully. So just get a little water, add it to some of your black paint, just a little bit, and then go over it again. Try not to get your uh, line any wider but the thinner paint will kind of fill in those white. But if you do get it wider, that's okay. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> no worries, no stress. It's just a painting. Okay. Okay, I only have a few more lines to go. Okay, so I've gotten all the vertical lines. Well, I'm going to add this one over here and this one. So, um, if you want to, you know, keep keep it going. You got, you know, it's not a race. If you need to pause the video, go right ahead and then push play when you're ready to come back and join us. Okay, looking good, Lily. Once you've done all the vertical lines, you can probably guess what we're going to do next. We're gonna do all the horizontal lines, but it's easier for me to go up and down than to go across. But everybody's different, so you figure out which way you like best. But I'm just gonna turn the canvas this way and do more vertical lines instead of go across like this, because I don't have as much control. I have more control when I go up and down. But you may not. You may have more control going across. Notice I'm just pulling the paintbrush down. I'm not going back and forth and back and forth to make one line. I'm just pulling it down. And we're not making a whole bunch of small, like, Hairy. lines. Yeah. 
Lily looking so neat. Okay. Okay, I'm about halfway through. more black. Okay, go ahead and give it, well here, you know what? I'm never gonna use all that. Go ahead and share with me. Okay. Because I'm almost done and I have a lot left. Cool. I think maybe you squirted uh, more. Maybe. Uh, I added a little water into mine and I think that made it go farther. Wow, I'm getting a lot of shapes. Add a little water to yours when you get those white dots. Ooh, that one came out really fat. I'm almost covered with all my, my black lines. Okay, so now that I see it, I'm gonna take a look at it and think, oh, do I like the way it looks or would I wanna add a few more shapes? Well, over here I don't have a lot going on, so I'm gonna add an extra shape here, an extra shape here. I'm gonna close that shape there. Got a few more shapes that need to be closed up. There and here, I'm gonna close a few shapes up. Let's see. Hmm, I think I'm looking pretty good. Let me do one more shape over here. Okay, I think I've got plenty of shapes now. So I'm gonna rinse out my brush. Wipe it out. I should probably wipe it first. So when you're done with your black, wipe it really good before you put it in the water when your water doesn't turn super black. Alrighty, while Lily's finishing up her black lines, I'm going to figure out what colors I wanna paint. So I'm going to use the colors, well, we definitely need white because we're gonna add white to every color that we use. And we're gonna limit it to two or three colors plus white. So here's the white, here's my white. And I think my two to three colors, I'm going to pick yellow as one. And I'm gonna pick this greenish turquoise color. So my mom here is gonna do three colors and I'm gonna do two. So I'm gonna do pink and orange. Pink and orange, okay, I'll get it set up for you. And then I've got light blue. So I've got white, yellow, turquoise, and light blue. And uh, you're doing orange and pink and white, right? So I've yes. got your white, I've got your orange, and I've got some pink. Now we use these little craft paints a lot because uh, we go through a lot of paint. If you have tube paints, tube acrylics, those work great too. We teach a lot of kids. They go through a lot of paint and the younger ones don't really know how much to squirt out sometimes if they get a hold of squirting it out themselves. So the craft acrylics, they're already thinned out a little bit and they work really good for us. But you know, use whatever paints you desire. And whatever you have. Yeah, whatever you have. But the acrylics are what stick to the canvas well. You could do this as an oil painting, but the oil just takes a few days to dry usually. So, Lily, you're almost there. You've only got a few more lines. Okay, we'll just give her a second, and for those of you at home, we're waiting for you too, but remember, you can always pause. Okay, that looks great. Oh, I have one more one okay. here. Okay. And I think that's it. Good, okay. So now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take and in every one of these spaces, see here, you're going to mix white plus a color. This one was only white and turquoise and pink. 
So every one of these shapes is filled in with a combination of two or three colors in the choices of white, turquoise, and pink. So this, I've got four now. So I'm gonna take white and I'm gonna dip white, dip yellow, and I'm gonna start here in this shape. Don't worry if you slightly go over your black lines. And then instead of rinsing out after every shape, that could take forever. Once your brush has that color combination in it, put it in like five or six spots. Put it in as many spots as you can before it runs out. So let's see, I've gotten about, let's just cover that one. Okay, I've got one, six, seven, eight. I got eight shapes out of that one dip. I only got one. So now I'm gonna dip white and dip turquoise. And now I'm gonna go and do a bunch of shapes that color. So one thing you can do is you can inline. That means you go inside the edges and then fill in the center. Or you can just go, you know, fill it in. Whatever method works for you. So the goal is to get every shape colored in, but you have to add some white because you want all your colors really light and pastel like this design. Okay, with that, that painting in mind as inspiration, just keep on filling in shapes with your choice of combinations from your palette. And if you do get another color in your, uh, in your shape besides what you want, uh, your white and your other color, that's okay because you want each, uh, each spot, each like space, shape. space <laughs> for your uh, with your color in a different like color tone. Okay, saying. yeah, a different value. Yeah, a different. Some like, can be like brighter blue, want, like a mine. Some can be yeah. brighter blue, and some can be more pastel, more lighter blue. And then like I got, I got some black in this one orange one, so it'll be like a grayish orange. So it's. It's totally up to you. And once my color runs out, mine's light blue, I can just take white and, and paint with white, but then it's still got that blue left over in my brush bristles. So it makes a new color, a really pastel color. Okay, that dip, I got a lot of shapes. Okay, now I'm going back to yellow and white, and maybe a little turquoise. Okay, so I'm going back to here. Try not to have all one color in one corner. Like spread out your colors. Hopefully your black lines were dry. If not, just go over to a dry area. Wow, got a lot of shapes to go, but I'm keeping going. I'm not giving up. This is gonna be an awesome painting because it's gonna look so detailed. With all these shapes in it. Looking good, Lily. Keep it going. What are those? Oh, spots I that you're want to do spots because I like when I do uh, a shape with the color, like you're trying yeah. to do like a couple shapes with a different color. Like I can't do it all. In one. I can't do. Oh, because like, your spots are shapes. big. No, because uh, like my uh, like I don't have enough paint on my. Like, I only can fill one shape and then I have to go back in for another dip. Oh, I see. So I could do like five shapes in one scoop of paint. Okay, so now over here, when you get to a corner, just use light colors. And you don't have to be one color in the corner. You can kind of mix as you go. And you don't have to wipe out your brush for me. Like, I I'm, having, I'm like having orange and pink together. In one yeah, and after thing, that paint so. brush dip runs out, just dip again in something and it'll be a new combination. Yeah. It'll be a different color. So Mondrian was doing these paintings over a hundred years ago and they were really different for that time. So people weren't doing things so minimal. So that's why he's pretty famous. And when he was doing these paintings that look like our backdrop a little bit, those were when he got to a point in his painting where he thought, I only want horizontal and vertical lines, nothing else. 
He also only wanted them to be black, and the only colors he used in his paintings when he got to that point of his career were the primary colors. Did you guys know the primary colors? What are those, Lily? They're red, yellow, and blue. He only used red, yellow, and blue in his, in his later paintings. And he only had the vertical and horizontal lines, and he only had squares and rectangles, nothing else. So he became very serious about this method that he created. Mm -hmm. Well, it was basically all rectangles, because squares are a special type of rectangle. Oh, okay. I bet you didn't think of it that way. Uh, no, I did not. Now the little teeny spaces, you just barely have the tip of your brush in. Yeah, wow, I'm getting there. I think I got about half of them filled in. Looking good, Lily. Glad you did big shapes. Oh, I started this one shape and then I never finished it. Oh, a little distracted and like that one too? Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, now I'm gonna make a bunch of lighter shapes because I have a lot of bright ones. I don't have so many light ones. painting with uh, mostly bright ones, you can go over the bright ones and with a tad bit of white and just brush over it. Oh, I see. Don't worry if you slightly go over the black outlines because it actually thins them out if you go over them slightly and they're not so wide. Wow, I'm gonna turn mine around for a while. This one just does not want to stay up, does it? There we go, okay. After a while, I think I need another color like yellow. Woo, more, more shapes in here. Oh my gosh, looking good, Lily. You're a little over half done. Okay, let's see how I'm doing. Looking good. Okay, I've got most all the shapes in the center of mine painted, so now I'm gonna do some light colors towards the edges. What well, means I'm just using those colors, but I'm adding more white. This took hardly any paint. I squirted out all that paint, and it looks like I've hardly used any. Touch up that with a little bit of black. All right, I'm gonna turn this over this direction. Work on this part. I'm almost done, Lily. What is it? Okay, I'm gonna take a look at mine. I see a few spots I missed. So I'm gonna go back into those. Okay, any really thick black lines I have, I'm gonna thin them out by putting some color next to them. Let's see if I have many of those. You almost done, though? No. Wow, I'm gonna set mine down and rinse my brush out. Lily, can I help you do a few shapes? I like this little mixture of, what did you call this orange, like sherbet? Orange creamsicle. Orange creamsicle. Orange, when it gets white mixed in with it. I think I'm good for that. Okay. Okay, while Lily's catching up, Remember, if we get ahead of you, to go ahead and pause it. 
and jump back on because we are getting close to being done and maybe you're getting close to being done at home. Or if we're going too slow for you, you can, uh, you can fast forward this, you can fast forward this video if you want to see what the next step is. shapes to go and then I'll be done. Awesome. All right, so while she's finishing up, I'm gonna go ahead and clear some things out of the way. I'm done with my paint and my paper towel. Make sure whenever you're done painting that you always wash out your paintbrush right away. Otherwise, with acrylics, it's just gonna get really stiff and hard and you're gonna end up throwing it away. Now I'm checking to make sure that I filled in all of my shapes. I think that looks great. And I think it's done. Okay, let's clear this out of the way and do it to that. Here, let's clear these out of the way first. Alrighty, here we go. Let's see what our final paintings look like. They look like this. Also, you can turn it this way if you really want to. That's all up to you. Alrighty, but this is how ours turned out and I'd love to see how yours turned out. So if you can, and if you're still working on it, take your time, make it the way you like it. But if you're done already or whenever you get to it, snap a photo of your finished painting and send it to us through Instagram by tagging it with at Art Classes for Kids or send it to me personally to my email, Kim at ArtClassesForKids.com and uh, and don't yeah. forget to like, subscribe, and click the notifications button if you want to know when more of our art videos are coming up. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, and if you want to help support our channel uh, and keep us bringing you free art lessons, you can tip us on our app called Kofi, which is got a link in the descriptions of this video. Or if you ever need any basic art supplies, we have compiled a list that we have on our website, which is artclassesforkids.com. And any of those supplies are linked to amazon.com. And if you buy them um, from our site, you're actually buying them through Amazon and they're delivering them to you. And they are donating a small portion of that towards our endeavors to make videos free to you at home. So, we hope you enjoyed this project and we hope you keep making cool art. art.